Hello, I am Kevin Neville. I am the new Next Gen Director here at Elam Fellowship. And we just wanted to shoot a little video um, to get to know me a little bit better. Um, so we're going to play a little game. I, I'm supposed to pick out questions from this boa. I have no idea what's in here. So let's get started. All right, question number one. Why are you so handsome? Oh, that's a good question. That's not what it says. Sorry. It says, what is your earliest memory? Um, my earliest memory, I think, was I grew up in a little town called Waterdown um, in Ontario, Canada. And I remember moving into the house um, in Waterdown when I was, you know, less than two years old. And I remember the tree in the backyard. Um, we had a big um, pine tree in the backyard that was just baby then, but grew up with me. And so it's kind of the same age as me. And that's my earliest memory. Okay, question number two. What do you order when you go out for coffee? Oh, that's a loaded question. I, being Canadian, am a Tim Hortons snob. I love Tim Hortons. Um, so I'll usually just get a medium regular coffee or sometimes I'll get a medium double-double, but I don't order that here in America's Tim Hortons because they don't know what a double-double is in America, which is confusing to me. But question number three. Besides New York, what other states have you lived in? Well, that's, that's a loaded question. Um, my wife is from Louisiana, um, so we've lived for a time in Louisiana. Um, West Monroe, Louisiana, right down the road from the Duck, Duck Dynasty gang. And, but we met in Virginia, so we have lived both in Virginia Beach and Richmond, Virginia. Um, we've lived in Rochester. This is uh, the second time we've lived in Rochester. We've lived in um, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Um, I think that's all the places I've lived at. Oh, no, Florida. We've lived in Florida twice. We've lived in um, Port St. Lucie, Florida, and we lived in St. Augustine, Florida, which I love in the wintertime. Okay, next question. What do you love most about your job here at Elam Fellowship? Well, I have just started the job. I've been at it for about a month. Um, but one thing, presently what I love is they, they let me set up my own office and, and I'm a bit of an office snob, so I, I brought in my own stuff. But um, I had a lot of fun setting that up and getting ready for um, what we're going to do um, in the future, which is going to be a lot of podcasts and a lot of content that we'll be able to share with you guys um, as we're really building the tribe and the community. And I just love the idea of the potential of this next gen director position. Um, in that it will be an inheriting what the youth position was, but expanding it. So we are going to continue to reach out to the youth pastors, but we'll even more. We want to reach out to the children's pastors and the middle school pastors and really build the community um, from those who minister in the church from birth all the way through young adults. But even more, we want to look out for those young leaders coming in to say, hey, there's a seat at the table for you and we want you to be part of that. So the potential of this is, is gonna be exciting, but it's already fun just sitting in and uh, getting to know everybody here at Elam Fellowship. If you were to write a book, what would it be about? Well, that's a dangerous question to ask me because I am writing a book. And it is one of the, the things that I'm most passionate about. I've been working on the book for almost three years now, and it's a book on the kingdom of God, and it's, it's called Jesus Land. And the premise is, is kind of looking at the, the modern Western church, looking at the early church, looking at revivals through the years, but really going back to look at the centricity of Jesus and saying, how are we called as the church in America to live in the kingdom of God? And where are we in relation to this immigration process in the kingdom of God? So keep an eye out for that Jesus land uh, coming not soon to a bookstore to you. Question number, who knows? Where did you go to school? It'd be easier to answer, where did I not go to school? Um, I'm, I'm a bit of a school nerd. My wife and I um, just love, love uh, being students. So um, I, I did my high school um, at a Christian school in Toronto, Canada, uh, Queensway Christian School, an Oakville Christian School. Um, and then when I graduated there, um, God called me to Lima, 
New York, of all the weird places to go. Well, I attended Elam. I um, attended Elam back in 91, um, started there, and uh, I just loved it. In fact, I loved it so much that I stayed on for a year after I graduated to work on the Youth Force team. Um, from there, I went to do my master's degree um, at Regent University and Old Dominion University down in Virginia Beach. Uh, and then um, I went on to do film school in Port St. Lucie, uh, Florida. What is your favorite way to unwind when you need to relax? Um, unwind? Um, I, I'm one of those people that just, you know, feel like I should be in, in this fabulous library with a fireplace and a good cup of tea and an awesome book with a blanket put up and, I don't know, a dog at, uh, on the ground and a cat on my lap, or just wiring the evening away, reading a classic. If you could meet and spend time with any person, living or dead, who would it be? Well, that'd be kind of freaky to have to spend an evening with a dead person. But, uh, oh no, <laughs> I don't know, I need to think about this one. I think I've been, I've been doing a lot of research lately, and just on, on the revivals that took place here in the, in the Rochester and the Burnt Out District um, here of upstate New York. And so Charles Finney has been somebody that has been really, you know, on my mind and, and, and looking um, to spend a lot of time just even talking to him about the Second Great Awakening. But even going back to one of my heroes of the faith, um, Count Zinzendorf, um, who was sort of responsible for the Moravian um, prayer meeting, the Hundred Year Prayer Meeting. And from that spurred, you know, the modern mission movement and the First Great Awakening um, revival, um, which of course led to the Second Great Awakening revival. So those are two revivalists that I would just really love to sit down and talk to. A book that I've been reading lately is on the Duncan sisters, um, who I work at a church called Bethel um, Christian Fellowship, downtown Rochester. I'm the family pastor there, as well as the next gen director here. Um, and the one thing that we have in common, both at Bethel and at Elam, is the Duncan Sisters as the, the foundation. And, and from the Duncan Sisters uh, came Elam and came Ivan Q. Spencer and, and also uh, Bethel Church. So uh, I've been reading a lot about them. I'd love to sit down with them and, and just kind of talk about what it was like at the turn of the century in Rochester. What do you like on top of your pizza? A giant steak, because I don't really love pizza that much. Um, what was the last book you read? I'm, well, the book that I'm presently reading is Intentional Churches, and then of course one on the, on the, the Duncan Sisters, and I, I'm loving them both. Um, but one of the ones that really I've been rereading is a book um, by Kayla Dweck called um, Mindset. And it's talking about the, the growth mindset versus the fixed mindset and, and how we're really geared, our, our brain is really geared for that growth mindset. But you know, in the Bible, we just call it humility and pride and, and how it affects us. So it was a fascinating book to read. Okay, last question. Got to pick the best one here that will tell you everything you need to know about me. What is something you have that is of sentimental value? Uh, that is an excellent question. I am actually, one of the things I love doing is I have two friends, one of my former roommates from Elam, and we section hike the Appalachian Trail every year. So we kind of pick up where we left off. And um, about 10 years ago, uh, his mother gave us hiking sticks um, and nice carved out of wood. And we've named our hiking sticks. I had a, a, a dog that passed away, so I, uh, a number of years ago, so I put his leash on it and I called it Aquila. Um, and so that is a precious hiking stick and I've just pulled it out of the closet this week to get ready for my hike next week. And uh, yeah, so that's something that is just um, precious to me. Well, uh, hopefully that uh, gave you more information than you need to know about me, but I am really looking forward to asking you guys questions, sitting down over the next few months and really kind of asking not only your story, how did you get into ministry, um, what are your needs, but really sort of having that time to listen to you guys as we dream up what God has for us together as a tribe um, in this next-gen uh, ministry. So, be talking to you guys soon. God bless.